Today I'm going to be showing you how to rebuild the Traxxas Millennium Brushless 3500 motor, part number 3351. And I'm going to do this with a Millennium Rebuild Kit done by Traxxas, part number 3352. This is what's included in the kit. You get rather detailed instructions showing you exactly what to do. You also get two bearings. The size of these bearings is 5 by 11 by 4 millimeters. An important note, the ball bearings included with this kit are special high speed bearings designed for use with a high performance Millennium motor. Do not use standard bearings for this application. And that includes part number 5116. You also get four replacement screws. The size of these screws is 2.5 by 5 millimeters. They also include four different sets of bushings, and I'll explain why in a little bit. There's also a couple of other things that you're going to need besides the 1.5 and 2 millimeter hex wrench. First of all, you're going to need a plastic or rubber mallet, a medium Phillip head screwdriver, and finally you're going to need the four-way wrench that Traxxas provides when you buy your RC. However, if you don't have the 4-way Traxxas wrench, then you can also use a 316 size socket wrench or nut driver. Now before I start rebuilding the motor, let me explain why there's 4 bushings available. There is two different versions of the Valenium motor, a current and original. The original, you can take off both ends of the motor. And there's a lot of people who are confused that if they did get the Valenium motor, you'll see that there's screws on the front of the can. However, when they check out their motor, those screws are not there. That's because this is the current gen can. The old one had four extra screws on this side so you can take this side of the motor off. However, with the current gen can, the screws are only located on this side. Since there's two different versions of the Millennium motor, that means that there's two different versions of the rotor inside. So you have four different possible setups. You can have the original can with original rotor, the original can with the current rotor, the current can with the original rotor, and the current can with the current rotor. That would explain why you get four different sizes of bushings. Now, with my motor, I have the current can with the current rotor. So all I need is bag D, which is just one bushing. There's no more of a delay. Let's go ahead and rebuild this motor. First of all, you have to remove the plastic end cap. All you have to do is firmly hold the motor and push the top. And it should come right off. Next, I have to remove all four of the screws that hold the top cap on. All right, and with all four of those screws removed, you can now take this end plate off. And you can just use your nails for this. It shouldn't be too hard. Okay, and there it is. Now we have access to the rotor. Now in order to get that rotor out, you're going to have to use a little trick. What you're going to want to do is grab the can firmly and push it down on a hard surface. This will push the rotor out enough for you to grab it. Now remember, there is a very powerful neodymium magnet in there, so it's not going to be too easy to pull out the can. Oh, check that out. It pulled out the bearing from the other side. Now I don't have to worry about that. But anyways, put this in a clean, dry spot. At the very end of the can, you'll see there's a little groove for a bearing to fit in. Now, what you would normally do is you would get the four-way wrench, line it up with a hole, and then use a mallet to knock it out. But, I don't have to do that, because for some reason, the bearing came out with a rotor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the bearing off, and ugh, that thing is nasty. But yes, go ahead, throw that away. And while I'm on the rotor, I'm going to pull off the brass bushing and throw that away as well because, well, they gave us a replacement. There is a couple of washers that should be located on there. Do not throw those away. You will be reusing them. Now it's time to get the bearing out of the other side. So what you're going to want to do is put the plate back on, use a socket, four-way wrench, or the nut driver, line it up with the hole, and hit it with, well, the rubber mallet. And that is how you get the bearings out. I'm going to go ahead and throw this away as well.
And as you have already noticed, there is some dirt and grime inside of the motor. So I'm just going to use a common RC motor cleaner to get all this out. And this is the stuff that I'm going to be using, just the Dynamite Magnum Force 2. And yeah, just spray it into the can, get all the dirt out. Now that the motor has been taken apart and cleaned and all the parts we don't need anymore have been tossed, it's time to rebuild it. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is toss a bearing into the can, just like that. Now we're going to use that screwdriver, position it so it lays flat in there. Just like that. So now it's time to go ahead and put the bearing back into the end bell. Get the other bearing, line it up, push it in as far as it can go. And believe me, you're not going to get it all the way in. This is a very, very tight fit. So, at this point, the instructions tell you to go ahead and get a piece of wood, like a 2x4, lay it on top, and then use a hammer and knock down the bearing. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. And there it is. Now, it's time to move on to the rotor. So I'm going to follow instructions and use only this bushing, since I have the current can and the current rotor. So I'll get some scissors. pull out the bushing and slide it onto the end just like that. Now it's time to go ahead and install this back into the can. So make sure you have a firm grab on it because as soon as it starts sliding in the magnet's going to pull it in the rest of the way. Just like that. Okay we'll put that back on. Make sure that it came out all the way and it sure did. Now I can go ahead and reinstall the end bell. Now, I'm going to go ahead, line up the hole with a rotor, get it going. Once it starts going in, I'm going to line up the holes for the screws. And now, I can put those four screws back in. Alright, with all four screws back, all I have to do is put the end cap back on. And it shouldn't be too hard to snap it back in, and you are ready to race. I guess the last question would be, how often should you rebuild your motor? Well, I've had this motor for just over a year now, and as you saw, the bearings weren't in the greatest condition, and it was pretty dirty inside. So I would suggest every six months, take it apart to clean it, and every one to two years, rebuild it. Well, that's it. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Other than that, I'm done.